One of the Pharisees, a scholar of the law, tested Jesus by asking, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Vu of Envu Films and I am back with another idiotic video for you to watch. In today's idiotic video, I am out here at my storage unit. Those who have been following my channel know that I'm a poor piece of wedding videographer trash. I live out of a storage unit. I'm just kidding. Middle of moving from one house to another house. So I currently have a bunch of stuff in storage and I'm not going to show you where my storage is because I don't want people knowing where to go to steal the trash that I own. Anyways, today's video is a different format. As you can see, it's shot differently. It's actually on my new phone. It's a OnePlus 9 Pro with the Hasselblad camera. If anyone pays attention to that kind of stuff, you know what this is. I'm just doing a quick test. Currently filming in 8K. Is this doable? Is it okay to film professional YouTube content with a cell phone? Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. You tell me in the comments below. But with that being said, I'm gonna get to the topic at hand is what lenses do I recommend for wedding videography? Of course, I've done many other videos on what lenses to use, you know, to be, what lenses to have as a videographer, but I'm gonna break down what lenses I like to use for wedding filmmaking. Obviously, for your day-to-day -day handheld use and on gimbal, as start, uh, you know, at the very, definitely at the very minimum, you want some type of 2470 and as always i recommend for the sony e-mount system for sony a7s3 etc etc a sigma 24 to 70 f 2.8 dgdn dn stands for d's nuts lens um and of course you know if you shoot canon or something like that kind of trash you can buy whatever 2470 you want and the 2470 would be for like your general handheld usage right like your b-rolls capturing prep capturing whatever it is on gimbal throughout the whole entire day uh, besides that i like to use 35 millimeter prime and right now i'm actually using 65 millimeter dg dn 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 stands for decent nuts lens from sigma as well as like my you know the uh the lens i use for general b-rolls and you know capturing like all the little knickknacks of the day um but yeah generally speaking you want a 35 a 50 type of lens and maybe an 85 for like more depth of field more portrait style looks i sometimes i like using 85 but it's kind of tough because a lot of times you don't you have lack of space with 85 but it's not as versatile as say like a 35 or 50 or even like a 65 which i'm using so keep that in mind for the ceremony, you obviously want some type of 70 to 200 type of zoom range, you know, 200 millimeter. I personally use a 70 to 180 Tamron uh, for the E-mount system. Use any type of 70 to 200 range you like. And I also have a 135 Prime that I also use. So that's for the ceremony. Um, those tight ceremony portrait shots that you need of the bride and groom. And of course you want a wide angle. I don't recommend anything wider than 24 millimeters unless you're trying to go for a very specialized look, but 24, at least a, around a 24 millimeter lens just for like a really wide angle shot if the bride and groom wants like a full coverage of like their entire wedding, like just a camera in the back, just recording the whole time. Not creative, just kind of like covering the whole thing. You want like a 24 millimeter um, lens. With that being said, guys, I always recommend I always recommend for wedding coverage, event coverage, using autofocus lenses. Uh, take advantage of that good autofocus from your Sony system. If you have Canon, good for you too. You could have pretty decent autofocus with that. Uh, maybe even Nikon, but if you're using like Blackmagic or something, you don't have to rack focus. And unfortunately, 
the way autofocus is now, it's so good that if you just touch the screen, you'd be on gimbal and the camera will just track your subject. You don't have to worry about rack focusing. I am pretty confident that the, at least the Sony system, the track focusing system will rack focus and track a subject better than any focus puller could ever do on the fly, uh, first take, no retakes all the time with confidence. And that's coming from me shooting like a bunch of weddings throughout my time. That being said guys, I hope this information was useful. Until next time, as always, lighten up.